the next uh, talk will be presented by dr jitin jos um, uh, from microsoft azure he is a principal software engineer at microsoft uh, his work focused on code design of uh, software uh, uh, and hardware building blocks for hpc platforms and performance optimization his research interests include hpc interconnect protocols parallel programming models big data and cloud computing before joining microsoft he worked at intel and ibm he has published more than 20 paper 25 papers in major conference and journals and he received his phd program from osu uh, in fact he is a one of the mbapit uh, uh, alumni and uh, if you go back um, interestingly i was thinking today morning um, almost 10 years back in 2011 we started looking at how virtualization can work with infinibus and if you go back and jitin has the one of the original papers and now he is working at azure where mature solutions are working uh, so 10 years a lot of things have happened on the virtualization with infinibus and he also has contributed quite a lot to the mbapis to x code um, the open spam design the hybrid mpip gas so uh, see, so he has a huge code footprint let me say in, in the mbapis to code and he also did a lot of work on the big data project we had on the high performance big data starting with memcached hadoop um so um so now let's see what uh, he will be speaking today uh, on the mapis to on microsoft azure hpc and ai clusters so jitin welcome thank you. thanks a lot dr panda and it's always great to be back at uh, mug um, so even though it's virtual this time but yeah th thanks a lot for the intro let me uh, start sharing my screen <clears throat> Uh, are you able to see the screen yeah yeah it is coming up yeah okay. just um, yes okay perfect um looks good yeah i'm just trying to get the pointer as well yeah. where can i get the pointer um i think the laser pointer if you just say a uh, click uh, right Get a is a PPT, am I right? Yeah, it's a PPT. Oh, okay. I think I got it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Go to pointer you. options. Yes. Sure. Thank you. So, yeah. Thanks, Dr. Panda, and uh, uh, welcome everyone for the uh, for the session. Um, so um, I organized it in the following manner. Uh, so we can start with a uh, with an overview of Azure HPC. Um, uh, we'll go over the latest um, uh, Azure HPC instances, the HPV3, which is AMD Milan, and the uh, NDV4, um, um, uh, and uh, some of the latest advances um, in terms of the technologies um, and what uh, features like we, we enable like as compared to last year. Uh, and some performance highlights uh, on uh, MAPS to Azure, uh, basically the MAPS to X, MAPS to Azure on HPV3. um uh, and back to gdr on the ndv4 um some cool performance highlights um and uh, 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 and a conclusion so uh, that's that's the overall uh, agenda let me go, go to the next one <coughs> oops So yeah, um, so let me start with the global uh, infrastructure. Um, so I mean, these are the different regions uh, that uh, I mean, uh, that Azure supports. Uh, I mean, like as compared to last year, I think it has grown tremendously. Uh, I mean, I think we have around like seventy seventy five around seventy five regions, um, and uh, I mean more than more than one uh, clusters uh, definitely per per each region, right? So it's it's uh, I mean, glob truly global infrastructure. um and uh, which provides you compliance and data re uh, resident uh, uh, data re res uh, residency service availability and of, of course with uh, reasonable pricing right so um, um um and uh, i just want to give you a quick snapshot of the different uh, uh, the vm sizes uh, i mean uh, for the sake of completeness i have included uh, all the different vms um including the general purpose uh, and all the way to the the hpc vms um and in core i really want to focus on uh, on the uh, hpc vm side so let's quickly go to the, the next one there is some issue with my okay okay so um the two different uh, hpc skus uh, so the h series and the n series so h uh, stands for the traditional uh, hpc vms where you have um Uh, a high compute or high, or um, I mean you know large memory, 
uh, plus uh, an IB, right? So that's the uh, standard H series. Um, and the different SKUs we have uh, H, HB, uh, HC, HBB2, uh, so all the way from, say, uh, Intel, uh, which is the H and HC, uh, uh, AMD, uh, Naples, Rome, and, and finally Milan. Right? We'll go into the details of the, uh, of the latest SKUs. Um, and similarly on the N series, which is the GPU uh, VMs. Um, so these are mainly targeted for uh, deep learning slash AI workloads um, uh, and also the visualization, right? So, so two different classes. One is the NV series, uh, which is mainly for the visualization SKUs. Um, and the next one is uh, deep learning, which is uh, ND or NC, right? So, so two different classes. So the main difference is that uh, the NC and ND um, I mean, they will have uh, IB, you know, InfiniBand as a backend uh, network communication. So, I mean, you can have like um, uh, really fast uh, network uh, communication, right? So, and one additional uh, point that I would like to highlight is that all the uh, uh, IB or RDMA enabled VMs, like we only have, will only always have one VM per host. Like we don't share uh, the VMs per, uh, uh, in the host, right? So uh, I mean, we'll always be having uh, one VM per host, right? So, um, okay. And um, yeah, let's let's take a detailed look at the Azure uh, HPV3 and the NDV4 series, right? So, um, um, so, um, uh, so this uh, HPV3 is AMD Milan. Um, and with uh, Azure, uh, with uh, ID 200 gigabits per second. So, uh, I mean, I really, uh, I mean, typically I, I show this diagram also, like how we shape up the uh, the, the VMs. Um, as many of you know, like uh, in uh, the Milan, uh, it's it's an uh, it's new architecture where, uh, I mean, in, in this case, we have configured it into NPS2 configuration where you have uh, I mean, the number of sockets, uh, number of new nodes per socket uh, is two. Um, and uh, you know, like uh, the, uh, the 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 number of uh, the CCDs, there are I mean, eight um, uh, eight cores per CCD, and you have four of them per uh, new node, right? Um, um, so basically, a cluster of cores, right? So um, that is the uh, uh, architecture for the uh, HPV tree. Um, and uh, I mean, like typically, like uh, even in last year, last year, like we presented how we partition the VM and uh, the Hyper-V so that there is uh, very less uh, jitter or almost no jitter at all, right? Um, so we use something like um, a Hyper-V feature, like Windows Hyper-V feature called MinRoot. So we basically carve out uh, X number of cores per every uh, NUMA node. Um, so that, uh, I mean, the Hyper-V lands only on those, those cores, right? So in this particular case, we take out two cores per every NUMA, right? So two, 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 so total eight cores are taken out um, and the rest uh, 120 cores uh, are given to the VM, right? So uh, this NUMA node will have 30 cores, uh, another 30 cores, um, 30, 30 here, right? Uh, so that's the um, um, architecture for the, uh, for the 120 core. Um, and in this case, uh, we, I mean, for HPV3, we did uh, uh, one step forward, actually. Um, so we uh, actually came up with uh, uh, different uh, different SKU types, like the 96 cores, 60, uh, 64, 32, and 16. Um, so basically taking six cores per every CCD uh, or four cores per every CCD or two cores or one core per every CCD. The advantage here is that I mean, if, if you are picking up like just one core per CCD, those cores, I mean, uh, I mean those cores can be run at higher frequencies and it will benefit uh, some of the EDA workloads or uh, or even say if you are paying uh, um, the, the, I mean, say some of the applications, they you pay per core, right? So if you don't want to use all the cores, you can uh, get benefit for the, uh, I mean, on the licensing cost. So um, that's, that's the uh, architecture for the AMD Milan. Uh, and the cool thing here is that we actually went GA on the day uh, AMD announced uh, this uh, uh, the, the CPU. So uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, so we, we went uh, live on that day. Um, and they, they are equipped with uh, 448 GB uh, memory and 200 gigabits per second uh, um, IB um, you know, exposed over SRIOV. So yeah, that was the first paper that, uh, I mean, uh, first virtualization paper from uh, our group, like uh, about SRIOV. So, um, but yeah, 10 years later, yeah, we have SRIOV here, yeah. Um, and um, uh, NDV4, um, uh, so this is even better actually. This is a really po a powerful SKU. Um, so here, uh, this SKU is actually based on the AMD ROM. 
Um, so like um, Milan, uh, it is again NUMA uh, architecture. Uh, but here uh, we take out eight cores for each NUMA because I mean, you know, obviously the system is like really powerful. Um, and so eight by four, like 32 we take out and uh, the rest uh, 96 cores we expose to the VM. Um, and these VMs have uh, 900 GB per memory, uh, 900 GB memory per VM. And uh, uh, it has eight A100 GPUs and eight uh, uh, IB200 gigabits per second uh, in free band, right? So um, it's really powerful and local disk of 6.4 terabyte, uh, terabytes, right? So it's uh, really powerful. And um, uh, I'll show some of the, uh, the results later, but um, I mean, uh, really cool numbers. Um, next, I would like to highlight some of the latest advantage, uh, advances. Um, so uh, starting with uh, uh, GPU Direct RDMA. So I remember last time there was a question like, okay, uh, do we support GPU Direct RDMA? So yeah, this time, yes, uh, we, we, we support uh, GPU Direct RDMA on the NDB4 instances. Um, I don't ha have to uh, go in detail to explain what is GPU Direct RDMA, right? So, um, um, uh, so uh, I mean, uh, so here we can, uh, uh, I have shared like two two screenshots. One is the uh, RDMA host memory um, um, results, uh, basically the ID write bandwidth uh, for the host memory and for the GPU direct memory, right? So you can see all eight pairs, uh, I mean, can reach the peak. Uh, uh, um, so 200 gigabits per second is a peak. Uh, it reaches, we reach about like 196 or 197. Uh, gigabits per second, right? So, um, and GPU direct, uh, this is uh, the, the, the lower one is GPU direct RDMA. Um, and here uh, you can see like all, all eight pairs can um, reach um, the um, 200, close to 200 gigabits per second um, and simultaneously. So um, that's, that's um, really cool. Um, uh, the good thing here is that, um, I mean, uh, it supports, I mean, like since it's directly, uh, I mean, uh, in, in case of Azure, since it is exposed over um, ID, right? Uh, it's exposed over SROV, like um, all GDR capable MP libraries or uh, other middleware, like, um, so everything can be supported. So um, I'll show some of the cool results with MAP2 GDR. Uh, so um, yeah, so I, I mean, all library, including MAP2 GDR is, supported here, right? So, um, and the next one um, is Sharp. Um, so yes, Sharp is also uh, now available on Azure, uh, especially on the NDV4 clusters. Um, so here uh, we have done, I mean, we, we work closely with uh, NVIDIA um, and we have uh, made several improvements on the Sharp side, right? So uh, the, the, one of the main difference is that uh, the Sharp AM, Sharp D communication now goes over UCX um, and not over the sockets. Um, so um, this is mainly to take advantage of the peaky based partition uh, so that, I mean, uh, different customers will have, will be having different peakies. So they, I mean, they, they their transfers don't um, get mixed, right? So, um, um, so that's the, um, I mean, um, and also there were some improvements on the sharp tree initialization, like, uh, um, and also the connection keep alive. Now we have really scalable and, uh, uh, I mean, reliable uh, sharp tree initialization. Um, and also, uh, I mean, in, in our case, like we, we, uh, we really, I mean, we have to really support um, large scale. Um, so and we, we now support GRH, uh, um, route, GRH routing. So uh, we can, um, we, I'll show some of the results uh, in the latest sections. Um, but quickly here, um, so this is uh, a nickel all reduced results. Um, the first one, the blue one is sharp disabled. Uh, so here you can see uh, the peak band, peak bandwidth. Uh, uh, I mean that what is possible is about 200 gigabytes per second uh, with all the eight uh, GPU uh, so IBs running and um, going in parallel. Um, and in our case, like we uh, we reach very close to say about 190 gigabytes per second. Um, and in case of Sharp. Uh, we go to about 227 uh, gigabytes per second. So here, I mean, um, uh, as many of you know, like Nickel uh, calculates the uh, bandwidth based on the, the the ring transfer, right? Um, so, but in case of Sharp, uh, the, the, I mean, you don't have two uh, x communication, right? So you only have one. Uh, I mean, your communication is, is actually cutting you two. So um, in theory, you should uh, get around 400 gigabytes per second, but uh, now the, the envy link becomes the bottleneck. So uh, now your your bottleneck by, I mean, your hit uh, that limitation. So we get around 227 gigabytes per second. 
Um, and these numbers are very much in alignment with the bare metal uh, numbers, so similar numbers uh, as the bare metal. Um, and uh, some of the congestion control, um, uh, congestion control um, uh, results. So, I mean, this is why I was asking uh, Matt uh, earlier about the uh, congestion, uh, I mean, the um, uh, experiment setup. So uh, here it's the GPC net um, results. So similar to uh, the uh, experiment setup that Matt uh, explained. So uh, you have uh, in GPC net, uh, you have like set of nodes generating traffic and uh, you're evaluating the performance on the other set of nodes, right? So um, I have two set of results. One is condition control disabled, and the second one is condition control enabled. Um, and uh, each line um, are different iterations of, say, the, the first line is uh, um, the random ring latency, the second line is uh, random ring bandwidth, and all uh, and all reduced, right? So, and different runs of uh, the benchmark. So, um, and the average uh, number is here, and the 99 percentile uh, number is here, right? Um, um, and uh, the congestion factor is uh, reported on the y-axis. Um, so yeah, so without congestion control, yeah, you can see that the number is, numbers are all over the place, right? Um, and now, uh, I mean, with congestion control enabled in the backend, uh, now you can see like uh, I mean, the average is actually very close to, uh, I mean, the ideal number, which is I mean, congestion control one, uh, congestion factor one is, is the preferred one. And um, 99 percentile, I mean, there are still uh, some outliers, but I mean, it has, it has improved quite a lot. And we are actually working closely with uh, NVIDIA on improving this. Um, uh, so, um, um, so this is still in, in progress, but uh, in, in much better uh, than without the condition control, right? So, yeah. and um, I mean, in Azure, um, it, this is uh, really critical, right? And not just in Azure, like any, any uh, uh, cloud where uh, it's very critical in public multi-customer environments, right? So um, that's, um, uh, that's it. Um, and the last uh, but not least, uh, I think I have one more. So the adaptive routing um, uh, it's now supported. So I'll just I'll just show you a quick uh, example uh, here, right? So this is um, the the different communication paths uh, in in um, in nickel all reduced. So for example, here we have uh, four uh, ranks A B C D. I mean, sorry, four different nodes uh, A B C D, um, and um, the blue big blue box is, is a rack. So you have like two servers here, one server here and one server here, right? So, um, and they are uh, communicating in this pattern. So, um, and suppose this is a uh, static routing and uh, say destination based routing, right? So it will say two, and then it wants to communicate to three, it goes to the uh, IB, you know, the uh, uh, upper layer IB switch, which is IB13, goes back here. Um, and then when host, host three wants to talk to host six, it will go to IB6. Uh, goes down, um, and from here, uh, host six wants to go to uh, host three, it will go to IB13, um, and then here, and finally 4A and 4B here. And we can see that, uh, I mean, the up, uplink communication, right, 1A and 3A are using the same link, and uh, we, when we actually measured uh, uh, the, the, the actual bandwidth we, we get for each of these uh, communication paths, Right, we could see, uh, I mean, this particular 1A and 3A, I mean, the actual bandwidth that we got was actually continued to have. And we see the same behavior uh, for the final uh, nickel bandwidth, right? So it was actually continued to because you are, you are the slowest, I mean, like you are the slowest part there. Uh, and now with uh, adaptive routing, right? Um, so thanks to uh, NVIDIA, right? So um, your packet is actually spread uh, across the different uh, possible um, um, paths. Uh, and now uh, with adaptive routing enabled, now you are back to uh, the close uh, peak performance here, right? Peak bandwidth. So, um, um, so uh, I mean, like, I mean, and in in case of NDV4, it is enabled by default. So, um, you don't, I mean, it is quite transparent to um, customers or users, right? So, um, that's another one. Um, and quickly, some of the other highlights. Um, so, uh, new topology now that is uh, uh, completely supported. Like you can see, uh, the actual new distances. This are actually measured uh, during a, a, a host start time. Um, the you know, different uh, topology information like uh, L3 level, the actual L3 level, uh, the, uh, the different PCI devices, uh, all the topology info is, is actually um, um, listed. Um, and exposed, um, the VM performance counters. Um, so that's also now enabled. Um, 
on on MDB4. Um, and uh, another cool feature is, uh, I mean, we have we now have a way to expose the topology to the VMs. So the sharp command is now, uh, I mean, uh, enhanced to add a topology command. Like what we can do is we can pass in the list of um, uh, the GYDs or uh, the channel C channel adapter IDs, and what you can get back is how those are actually organized in the network. So uh, in in the in the keynote talk, Dr. Panda talked about the importance of topology for uh, especially the old tool, etc. Like I mean, you can really take advantage, take it to the next level by take, feeding this topology as an input, right? Um, and what you get back here is uh, the slum topology format. Um, like the topo.con uh, file, um, so you can um, um, make make use of that in 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 the uh, in the production workflow. Um, so I mean, this is not the final. I mean, not the like exclusive list. Uh, there are much more. I just include included the highlights. Um, like uh, the, all the uh, network transport, like DC um, and other the goodness, like XPM, everything now everything should be uh, possible. Everything is actually possible on um, Azure, right? So. Um, um, and uh, let me quickly, let's, because of time, let me quickly move to some of the performance highlights. Um, so um, we go to the Azure, uh, MAP to Azure uh, on HPV3 in the Milan. Um, so here, um, this is uh, MPI latency. Um, um, I mean, this is the IB latency and MPI latency. So um, between two nodes. Um, so 1.6 microsecond um, on, uh, on, on for the low, uh, small message size. Um, and uh, here you can see, uh, um, so the, the, this is 200 gigabits per second. Um, so we should reach the peak of about like say 25 uh, gigabytes per second at the peak, right? So we are reaching with the MIP2, we are uh, hitting around 24 gigabytes per second. Um, so the only um, star here is that like, I mean, uh, this, this is the ENV configuration, right? Uh, I mean, uh, here also uh, we are making use of the two QP um, um, a design advantage. So um, you get very close to um, um, uh, the peak performance here. Um, and uh, this is the uh, IB level um, uh, bandwidth also. Um, and quickly going to the um, uh, intra node latency. So uh, MAP, this is again a map is two with XPMM, XPMM off and XPMM on. So you can see for the large message uh, sizes, we are uh, really getting good advantage with MAP is two X uh, with XPMM on. Um, so same with uh, uh, latency and also the bandwidth, right? Really um, uh, good improvement on the bandwidth also. Um, so, um, and, um, Quickly on the GDR, uh, MAP2 GDR on MDB4, right? Um, so um, this is the, uh, I mean, like we collected like two, two set of results, one GDR disabled and GDR enabled. Um, so you can see latency is, I mean, latency graph is quite nice. Um, so it, I mean, we can see good improvement with MAP2 GDR. Um, and also here, uh, another good thing is uh, I mean, the, uh, the uh, P2P bandwidth, um, you are getting, very close to um, uh, the, the peak bandwidth, 24.5, uh, 24.1 gigabytes per second with MAP2 GDR. Um, yeah, so I mean, and uh, I've also added the different uh, ENV parameters over here uh, for, for this experiment. Um, and um, recently, I just want to quickly highlight about the uh, the HPC VM images. I'm sure. Uh, I mean, so we offer like two different flavors. Uh, one is CentOS based HPC and Ubuntu based uh, HPC and AI. Um, so I mean, both of these. I mean, uh, uh, so Ubuntu will, should, will work on uh, both HPV3 and NDV4, and uh, one of the uh, uh, CentOS 7.9 image uh, images that will work on the NDV4 and. Other uh, CentOS star images will work on the regular um, um, uh, HPC VMs. So good thing here is that it's, as it comes with a set of uh, pre-installed uh, um, pre uh, um, libraries. Uh, for example, it comes up with Moped, um, um, the, the, all the uh, MPI libraries, including MVAP2, uh, MVAP2 uh, uh, X, um, and uh, in, in the future, we are trying to add MVAP2 GDR also in for their uh, for the uh, Ubuntu image um, and the uh, different communication runtimes, like Fabric, OpenUCX, um, all the other um, uh, libraries, Nickel, uh, Nickel RDMA Sharp plugin, Sharp D, uh, and also other uh, optimizations like the vendor uh, recommended optimization. So everything is baked in. So you just need to deploy with this image and you're uh, ready to go, right? So that's, that's the uh, beauty. 
Um, and I just uh, quickly wanted to uh, highlight on some of the uh, uh, numbers. So this is a uh, nickel scaling uh, without sharp. Um, so you can see, uh, I mean, like this, um, uh, this is with two, 256 um, uh, processes, like eight per uh, node. Um, and we, here, yeah, we can see uh, the, the scaling uh, pattern. It's very, uh, very nice and always speaking to uh, close to 190 uh, gigab uh, uh, gigabytes per second. Um, and this is nickel all to all. Um, so here, I mean, I, I think many of you know that. Uh, so nickel all to all, it's just uh, point to point based, right? Uh, so I mean, everyone sends to everyone else. Um, and nickel I and mean, all 12 is implemented like, just like a uh, point to point linear a uh, linear manner so uh, for this uh, this is the different uh, uh, i mean like 16 processes 32 uh, 64 uh, 128 and 256 so you can see like for the small scale i mean the um, your performance is actually dominated by the intra node transfer so that's why you are getting higher bandwidth but as you um, as you come um, uh, like here your network your more uh, internode or communication bound um, then you, you um, peak at around 20 gigabytes per second. Um, so this is again um, uh, aligning, uh, aligning very much closely with the bare metal results um, for both. Um, and um, I just wanted to highlight some of the really larger scale uh, numbers uh, um, um, with nickel. So this is again without sharp, uh, 565 nodes, uh, that is about 4,520 4, um, A100s. Um, so, uh, I mean, here we are picking about uh, 120 gigabytes per second, um, and this is um, uh, like 1,500 nodes uh, of NDV4, uh, 12,000 ranks, um, or 12,000 A100s. Yeah, so we are uh, very, uh, picking close to, to about 120 gigabytes per second. And here, uh, this is again the nickel already is which sharp. Um, this is probably the largest sharp job um, ever. Um, so um, with, with 998 nodes, uh, I mean, we are uh, hitting around close to uh, 190 here. Um, and uh, uh, with, with vital nodes, again, close to 200 gigabytes per second. So um, it's yeah, uh, showing really good scalability. Um, and uh, I mean, all, we, we, um, almost uh, zero virtualization overhead. Yeah. Um, and uh, quickly on the HPv3 performance advantage. Uh, so, I mean, just want to highlight the two different uh, applications, open form and uh, fluent. Um, so, um, um, open form, um, um, like you can see, uh, really nice scaling graph here. Uh, about uh, so, um, the, the y axis is the speed up here, uh, relative speed up. Um, so, um, it goes almost linear until here. And now, uh, after this, the, the larger cache uh, becomes the advantage, and you, uh, you, you get better scaling after, after, after that point, right? So same trend here. Uh, so you get almost uh, linear here. Then um, the, uh, you get the improvement from, from the larger cache in Milan, and then you, you get really uh, good scaling results. Um, so this one was uh, open form, and this was uh, fluent. Um, so in both cases, um, I mean, really nice uh, scaling graphs. Um, yeah, so I think yeah, that's that's all the uh, highlights. And um, if if I mean, just wanted to summarize that, um, I mean, supercomputer on cloud um, is actually uh, real now, right? Uh, so the NDV four, um, it's it's really powerful and uh, showing real uh, um, um, performance and scalability. Um, and uh, like both um, HPv2 and uh, NDV4 has made into uh, the top 500 ranks, uh, I mean, uh, top 500 slash uh, graph 500 ranks, um, graph 500 uh, rank 17 and top 500 like less than 30. Um, and the, the cool uh, thing is that, I mean, the cloud actually, I mean, I mean, makes it makes the supercomputer available for almost everyone, right? Before uh, these, I mean, uh, the supercomputers were re really available only for, say, uh, national research, uh, some research lab or um, some selected uh, members, right? So um, now, I mean, like with, with the cloud, um, I mean, we really make it available for everyone, right? And uh, uh, I mean, and, and just um, the cutting edge technology is not good enough. Like you, you want to have like the uh, middleware such as MAP to, to, to get uh, hardware features available for the application performance, right? So, um, you know, and, and, and you can see like uh, MAP to, uh, I mean, middleware such as MAP to really get the, I mean, offer the high scalability and, and performance. So, 
um and uh, let me conclude with um some of some um, quick pointers um and the different uh, uh, documentation links like getting started on azure uh, highlights on the different uh, SKU sizes hpc gpu sizes uh, the vm image images uh, the link uh, um the different the set of scripts that we um uh, prepare the the vm images uh, and some sample scripts um, like for vm deployment um uh, the cycle cloud uh, and the last year mark tutorial um, and some uh, quick blogs, uh, some, some performance highlights, et cetera, for, from the tech community. Um, so yeah, that. And um, so we have um, multiple different positions uh, open uh, at Azure, like I mean, different teams uh, in Azure HPC are, um, uh, uh, have openings. Um, so if you know someone who is uh, interested uh, who, or who might be interested, so um, uh, please uh, send a note to uh, um, mail ID. Um, so yeah, thank you. Um, that let me conclude and uh, more than happy to take any questions. Yeah, so uh, thanks thanks a lot, Jitin, again. Uh, one uh, question on the Q&A box uh, uh, for the, let me read it. Um, sure. Oh. It's from Kenneth Hostel. Uh, for the CFP benchmarks open form and fluent, mm -hmm. are you using all available cores in the nodes or did you so have to avoid using some cores? to ensure yeah. memory bandwidth didn't become a bottleneck. Yeah, so so in this case, it is not uh, all the 120 cores. So it was actually, I think like 116 or 112, those gave the best uh, best results in both the cases. So um, it yeah, it was not, uh, not all the cores to get yeah, as, exactly what you mentioned, right? So um, um, uh, to get the best, best performance. So uh, in this case, uh, it is 64. Um, nodes, uh, but with 7,680 ranks. Um, so same, same here. Um, so um, yeah, so typically like 112 or 116 is, is the sweet spot that we get uh, for for, uh, I mean, uh, for these benchmarks. Um, there is a one question on the Slack, but might be that is about uh, uh, Maria Del Carmen. She's asking um, what is uh, GPU Direct RDMA? So might be you can uh, reply oh, back sure. that on the Slack. Yeah, I'll, I'll reply back. Okay. Sure. Thank you, Dr. Pandey. Are, are there any other quick questions from anybody else? Okay, so if not, let's again thank uh, Jitin. We'll remain on schedule and then move to the uh, next talk.